So these are honestly one of the highest profit margin items that we sell and routinely sell. I don't pay much for them. I can buy them in bulk as well. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about a specific item, a specific niche that we've played in for a very long time. We sell thousands of dollars worth of these items every single year. We've sold tens and tens of thousands of dollars, maybe a hundred thousand plus in these items specifically as well. We're going to talk a little bit about photos, value of those photos as well, why some of them can be worth a lot, and First off, we're going to talk about where I find them. Now, photos turn up everywhere. Uh, church sales is one that I've turned up some very good thousands of dollars worth of photos just from church sales. I've even found some out of savers in the past, some uh, photo albums and books and things like that. Uh, they turn up quite often at estate sales, probably geez, the majority, like 90% of every estate sale I've been to has some form of photo sitting there. So there's always potential garage sales even. If it's an old garage sale, they're clearing out a house before they're selling it or something, ask. Ask them if they have any old photo albums or anything they're planning on getting rid of or anything. You'd be surprised at how many turn up just by asking. Another good area would be auctions, vintage auctions and flea markets. Those are all great places to find quantities of photos. I even go to antique malls and buy photos that are worth good money all the time. So they are in every possible place you can think of. Wherever you're going uh, sourcing, chances are there's opportunity to buy them. Even going out of business sales and things, I've bought some really valuable photos from those sorts of places. Sometimes they're even framed very nicely, so you don't even have to worry about that. And you can crank out better money by selling them in a very nice frame setup. There are some areas in that specific niche that, uh, in photos in general, that I do extremely well in. Now this one's tied to one of those areas. It's a nice photo, you can tell it's a real honest to goodness photo. This is from the 1940s, and this is from China. It's got some markings in the back. We'll look at the listing itself. This has sold, and it's sold for quite a bit of money. I have nothing into this whatsoever at this point. We purchased a, a quite a bit of photos, close to 250 photos, to get four photos from China. They were all just mixed in together. So this is a perfect example of finding stuff like this, the diamond in the rough. To anybody that looked at it, and a lot of people looked at it at the auction that I was at, all of them just flipped through it. They never dug through them really deep. I picked them up for almost nothing. And I still have hundreds of photos from that purchase, which I could sell in lots as well. I just sold the top dollar items first. Get my money back, and off we go. This is not the first one of these that I, I sold, actually. There were four by the same photographer, which, again, we'll show you in just a minute here, in that lot. You'll see what this sold for in just a minute here. I have less than 20 bucks in all of those 250 plus photos, including the China ones. So you've just got to be careful. I found $100, $200, and even $300 photos shoved in books. Bibles specifically, it happens quite often. An old postcard in an old Bible from 1920 of some really fabulous place, and it's a real photo postcard. Things like that show up quite often. It, it's a great example. Photos in general, as long as you have a, a general idea on what you're looking for, the higher value ones, how to tell if it's a new one versus an old one, the basic knowledge in any category, as long as you have the basics on this and you have a phone, you have the abilities to look it up, you can do extremely well. Anybody can hop into the photo niches as well. Now let's hop over and look at the listing and I'll show you what it actually sold for. Now I listed it for 450 bucks. It's a photo of a pagoda in Peking, China from 1940s. Something that turned up again in an auction with a whole bunch of other photos as well as three other ones from this exact same uh, printer. There's some names and information on the back, luckily. That always helps out with things like that. It adds to the value. Uh, it's 
got some very good identification as well. You can track down the artist. It has some local stampings to give you some really firm information on the whole aspect of this. Now, again, I listed this a while ago. I listed all four of them. I sold a couple right off the bat. We made a ton of money, a huge profit, and the rest have sat for months since then. And this is the last one of the China photos from that purchase sold here. So that's about a thousand bucks back out of just a couple of photos. Here you can see the actual sales record as well as the taxes and shipping costs that we charge for this. Just to give you an idea on what we charge. I always charge actual shipping costs on it. Everything goes tracked. Nothing goes in an envelope. On this one here, I'd probably do signature confirmation out of our money. I don't mind doing that. It's far easier just to get them to pay immediately on some of these sorts of items, or at least not wait with going back and forth or adding anything on. If they sell for a decent amount, I don't mind shelling it a few extra bucks to cover that sort of thing. It's always uh, better for you, and obviously it makes the buyer realize that you take good care of their items. This will be wrapped meticulously as well. Typical example, I sell photos all of the time. There's always money to be had if you're buying the right types of material. It's not something that's just only one person can find in this country. I found good photos worth a lot of money all over the country, across every place I've been, from the East Coast to the West Coast, North, South, East, West, everywhere we've been, I've been able to pull out photos worth some good money. And as I said, I've even found valuable photos inside of books and Bibles. I've even found some in comic books before. So there's all sorts of opportunities. Sometimes somebody will grab a photo and use it as a bookmark. Sometimes they just put their family photos in a Bible. All sorts of different places like that you can find them. There isn't a spot at an estate sale that I don't dig around uh, through. The attics are great for photo albums and photos. Bookshelves, the garage, even the basement sometimes in bedroom closets. The older the house, usually the better if that's the places you're going to go. Local live auctions are also great because you can find the diamond in the rough that other people aren't going to be digging through to look for, especially when it's huge, huge lots of photos that they have at auction for a starting price of, say, 10 bucks, which was what I bid on for the purchase here you see. Again, I ended up paying just shy of 20 bucks. Now you see the money is obviously there. You can make a lot of money with just one single photo. Now the other ones are already gone, sold in the same price range as what I just showed you. So a thousand buck return on a less than $20 investment in bulk. And I still have a lot of other photos that could still net me a couple hundred more bucks combined. So there's, there's a ton of money in there. Now, what's the drawback? There's got to be a drawback in this is what I'm going to hear. There is a huge drawback for many. Obviously, the learning curve to get the basic information in this area. But the, the biggest drawback for most people, which may keep you out of really going hard into some of these sections, is that you got to have a bunch of items to do this. You, you're going to run long tail. It's going to take the right person online to want to pay 250 bucks plus shipping for this item here. So you've got to keep that in mind. It's, it's not an easy sell every single time. Even though we sell them for really good money, chances are you may only sell a couple in the first week or two if you've got a big bunch of them. Again, they'll sell over time and you'll make a lot of money, but you have to be able to do it as a long tail basis because you got to have a quantity up to, to get enough interest. It's always going to take the right person to see your items for them to sell if you mess in a lot of these specialty vintage collectible antique niches. Whatever they are, antiques, collectibles, the vintage niches will always take the right person. There's a very few bits of items that everybody wants, like... Um, jadeite or something like that there's a ton of collectors but for the most part this is more specialized than anything like that these would have been made in limited quantities as well so there's a limited amount of people that are going to want to spend 250 bucks on a single photo of just some place in a country so always keep those in mind if you've got the time the money the the amount of listings that will garner you a repeat business and constant sales you're awesome that's way to go that will get you but there's other ways to do this of course but if you're going to do photos and center it on them 
most of them are going to be long tail. Right now, we've got thousands of real photos in our store, military, uh, things like that, movie-related, China. I, I usually buy anything related to China. Not the only place as well, but one of the better places to buy stuff that's going to sell routinely. So hopefully that gives you some ideas. Hopefully that gives you at least some thoughts on another area, another niche that can make you a ton of money if you can put the effort and the time into it. But anyway, that's what I have for you today. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Introducing the Kodak Instant Camera with a twist. Meet the Crank. Can you feel a brand new day? Imagine instant pictures with color. Color. Color by Kodak. Just crank, 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 and in minutes you get bright, colorful instant pictures with a textured satin lux finish. See your photo dealer and shake hands with the Crank. A Kodak Instant Camera with a twist.